Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. I'm going to be hanging out with you for the next hour or so, answering your questions about a proper human diet, about nutrition, about medical practice, uh, specific medications. You're welcome to ask me any questions regarding these matters. Let's not talk about sex, religion, or politics. Let's just keep it to biology, medicine, nutrition, anthropology, paleoanthropology, archaeology. Any of those topics are fair game. We can talk about the blue zones. We can talk about the American Diabetes Association because there are many, many millions of people with prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, and more importantly, in my opinion, undiagnosed diabetes. And these people have no idea the damage that they're doing to their body by eating the diet that they're eating. In many cases, the diet that her, their doctor or their dietitian has specifically recommended to them, that diet is damaging their body and they have no idea because they've been told by their doctor that as long as their A1C is around seven, that's good. And the doctors say this because that's what the American Diabetes Association tells them to say. Millions of people are under the false assumption that if they get their A1C at seven or a little below, that they're safe. <clears throat> and they are most assuredly not safe. They are doing damage every day by the diet that was recommended to them by their health care specialist, their doctor, their endocrinologist, their diabetic educator. So if you want to help me reach these people who think that an A1C of seven is good, please click the share button right now and share this with all of your people. I'm live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter right now. There's a share button on all three. You can share this to all your followers because I guarantee you at least one of your friends or family members has undiagnosed diabetes, prediabetes, or diabetes. Guaranteed. And they think an A1C of seven is good. Take your pills and eat your American Diabetes Association approved carbohydrates. You're doing great. And that's terrible advice. That's going to cause them to die early, have a heart attack early, have a stroke early, have to be on dialysis early, go blind early, lose a toe, a foot, a leg. So please hit the thumbs up and then hit that share button and share this with all of your people so that I can help reach new people who don't know the truth yet. Thank you for doing that. Kim's watching from Mississippi. <clears throat> Where are you guys? Where are you watching from? What city? What state? What country? Put it in the comments. I've already seen Germany, the UK, Australia. What time is it in Australia? Shouldn't you be in bed right now? Here's wild captures from Philadelphia. People all over the world tuning in. Patricia from Jacksonville, Florida. There's Aussie Steve. Steve, shouldn't you be in bed? I don't know what time it is there. There's Mitzi. She's one of our moderators in our private group from Northern Virginia. Tell me where you're watching from, guys. I want to know. Thank you very much, Michelle. Seeking, finding. Thanks, Dr. Barry. You changed my life. I get this a lot, and, and I want to say thank you to be polite. But what I what I actually feel is, isn't that what a doctor's supposed to do? Is change your life, improve your life, save your life, pull you from the brink of metabolic disaster? That's kind of a doctor's job. That I kind of just feel like maybe instead of saying thank you, just say job well done. You're doing a good job, doctor. I don't know, but you're welcome. Seek and find it. UK carnivore guy on carnivore for four weeks, lost a few pounds, sleeping better and skin clearing up. Started my own YouTube channel to share my journey. Thanks for everything. See, this is what I love. UK carnivore guy. So any of you guys in the UK, follow UK carnivore guy. You could probably even meet up with him to share a steak 
or some keto coffee or something. Thank you very much, Linda. Dan says, my CGM average up from 118 to 157 in the last month without insulin. Possible sugar-free drink uh, recommended by my personal uh, trainer. Yeah, personal trainers are great at training you, but they don't know much about nutrition very often. Uh, it could be the root cause. It absolutely could be that drink that you're drinking and you're under the false assumption that that drink is healthy and good and will improve your health. And what it's actually doing is raising your blood sugar and increasing the levels of glycation all over your body. Yeah. So I would, I would stop that. And this would be a great uh, experiment. Uh, Nisha and I both are great fans of the N equals one experiment, which means experiment on yourself. So a great experiment Dan could do. He, he sees over the last month that his blood sugar is trending up. What he should do is stop that recommended sugar-free electrolyte drink and see how his blood sugar responds. If it goes right back down to 118 average, it was the sugar-free healthy drink. That's what it was. If you're part of our private group, Dan, keep us up to date in the main chat. I want to know if that's what it was or not. Samir, my father is age 60, just diagnosed with early Parkinson's and cerebral atrophy. Can the progression be slowed down using a diet? So we have thousands of anecdotal reports of people doing just that with Parkinson's, with Huntington's, with various different kinds of dementia, vascular and otherwise who were able to slow down the progression and improve the symptoms, Samir, by eating a proper human diet. Now, what is a proper human diet? It is a diet that is full of real, whole, one ingredient, unprocessed foods that are ancestrally appropriate, meaning that humans would have eaten them more than 12,000 years ago, and that are nutrient dense and that are uninflammatory. And so I've got many, many videos on my YouTube channel about a proper human diet. Uh, a proper human diet is a real whole one ingredient ketogenic diet without all the keto cookie cakes, pies, shakes, pancakes. That that stuff's not keto. That's for shit. That's what that is. OK, that keto bread in the grocery store is not that's not keto. OK, keto is meat and veg. Half your plate covered with meat, half your plate covered with low-carb veg. A few nuts, a few berries. That's keto. Okay, so first of all, if anybody says, oh, keto is dangerous, people are like, uh, humans have been eating meat, meat and vegetables for uh, hundreds of thousands of years. Now, meat and veg, is, that's dangerous. Uh, also, a ketovore diet, which is mainly meat. 90% of your plate covered with meat, 10% just veg for flavor. Some people like me fatten so easily and develop diabetes so easily they need to be as close to zero carb as possible, and that's a carnivore diet. So you've got keto, ketovore, carnivore. That's the proper human diet spectrum. No human on the planet needs to eat more than 50 or 100 total grams of carbohydrates a day. There's no, there's no nutritional benefit, no medical benefit, no training benefit. There is no benefit. Okay. That's a proper human diet. And yes, Samir, you can absolutely slow down the progression and perhaps even greatly improve the symptoms by lovingly uh, uh, transitioning your father to a proper human diet. Tired looking for name. Leafy greens are pushed as a source of nitric oxide. Uh, yet another cardiologist on YouTube lately. Yeah, I want you guys to keep a close eye on uh, nitrates and nitric oxide because it's about to become very, very popular. Is there any hard science that proves that and how carnivore diet affects nitric oxide? So <clears throat> one of the first videos I made on YouTube was about the nitrates, the sodium nitrates that are used to cure bacon. Human beings have been curing meat with salt like that for about 8,000 years. Yet bacon is, is a processed food and it's bad for you. It's dangerous. It'll give you colon cancer and heart disease. But the nitrates that are used to cure the bacon actually break down into nitric oxide in your body, which dilates your blood vessels and lowers your blood pressure. And there's a new study that just came out that, that showed that it's actually very protective of the kidneys if you give somebody a nitrate supplement. 
you can get nitrate for free just by eating bacon. So you can also get it from uh, beet greens and celery. You can get it from vegetables, no doubt, but you can also get it from bacon. And that's why so many people who are eating the brand of carnivore called beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, notice their blood pressure goes down because bacon is a rich source of nitrates, which break down into nitric oxide. Isn't that cool? And uh, there's actually a pharmaceutical company trying to, they're doing trials right now with a nitrate pill, which is the same nitrate that you cure bacon with for a, as a blood pressure medicine, because it lowers your blood pressure. That's one of the many health benefits of eating bacon. Cool, right? Gail, your thoughts, uh, PRP breast lift. So platelet-rich plasma is, is, is great for healing injuries. Uh, I guess you could use it for a breast lift. I'm not, I'm not sure the physiology of how injecting platelet-rich plasma would lift the breast. I'm not sure how that would work. But if you have a torn meniscus, or a torn, partially torn rotator cuff muscle, or you have knee arthritis, arthritis in any joint, find a doctor who does platelet-rich plasma injections. Uh, that needs to be something you try before you ever talk to a surgeon about doing surgery. Eve, uh, estimated glomerular filtration rate is a calculation based on creatinine and age. How often is it wrong when actually measured? Uh, the you're right, EGFR on uh, basic metabolic panels and complete metabolic panels is a calculated measurement. And it's, it's pretty darn accurate most of the time, but it can be uh, inaccurate in some specific situations. Uh, so if, you go, if, you, if your creatinine is normal and your EGFR is normal, then 99.9% .9 of the time your kidney function is fine. Uh, you can check a direct GFR, but it's a much more complicated test. So the vast majority of the time, you're going to get an eGFR. Donnie, thank you, Doc. You changed my life. I am depressed. I was depressed. Skin was a disaster. And at 29, I thought feeling like crap was normal. How many 29-year-olds, 20-somethings, 30-somethings, just are just in a chronic funk. They think that's that's just normal. You feel like crap on a daily basis. I'm only three weeks in, down 16 pounds, and never felt better. God bless you. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you very much. Now, Donnie, I need you to pay me back, and the way I need you to do that is to pay it forward. I need you now that you're improving your life. You need to find a 20 or 30-something friend and say, dude, you don't have to feel like crap every day. Let me tell you what to do. All you guys, that's how you can pay me back. Just pay it forward. So you know what? Listen to Dr. Barry's videos on YouTube. And I, if you have any questions, text me, call me. I'll, I'll help you because it's worked for me and it'll work for you too. Bonnie Blue just woke up from her nap. Hey, little baby. Chicklets. Hey, Dr. Ken, I'm from North Texas. I just turned 50 and I sometimes feel it may be too late for me to get healthy. Is 50 too late? First, let's say hi to Bonnie Blue. There's Bonnie. She just woke up. She just woke up from her nap. Hi. What you doing? Can you say hi? Say hi to that baby. Yes. This. 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 Every time she says something, she says this. That means she wants it. I love you. Go see mama. Go see mama. I got to answer Chicklet's question. Hmm? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to answer Chicklet's question. Yeah. This this come away. Go to mama. Go get your baby mama. Okay. Where did Bobby Where'd go? Where did she go? I can't baby. find her. She's been hiding from me. Baby, there you are. <laughs> All right, girl. Go do something productive. All right, Chicklet. I'm 54. Going to be 55 soon. 
And back when I was 35, I felt like you probably feel it too. I was tired, yucky, inflamed, stiff, irritable. And now at 54, I feel better now than I did when I was 35. And I did it by applying the principles of this book, Kicking Ass After 50. I wrote this book with my good friend, Zane Griggs. Uh, 50's not too late. 60's not too late. 70's not too late. Okay? Absolutely not. Any of you guys, I don't care how, what age you are. There's a link down in the show notes if you want to get a copy. If you can still fog a mirror, which means effectively if you ain't dead yet, then you ain't dead yet. Okay. You can start today, Chicklet. And the way you're going to start today is your very next meal. You're only going to eat meat and eggs, maybe some low carb veg, maybe not. It's up to you. Okay. You're not going to eat any more wheat, rice, oats, corn. You're not going to eat any grains whatsoever this next meal. You're not going to eat any sugar this next meal, whether added sugar or naturally occurring sugar. And you're not going to eat any vegetable seed oils like soybean oil, canola oil, peanut oil, uh, any of those, corn oil, none of that. You're going to use animal fat like butter, beef, bacon grease, or beef tallow to cook your food. You're going to eat lots of fatty red meat, lots of eggs with the yolk, and you're going to eat until you're full. You're going to repeat that with each meal as the days go by. And what you're going to notice after two or three days of that is that you, you feel better. You're less achy, less stiff. You're more mentally clear. And every time you do mess up and you eat some wheat, wheat, uh, you know, you can make anything out of, of ground up wheat, uh, soybean oil and sugar. You can make a pizza crust. You can make a tortilla. You can make a jelly donut. You can make a birthday cake. You can make a pancake. All those things are the same thing. They're just a conglomeration of ground up grains, vegetable oils, and sugar. Those things cause inflammation. They cause your blood sugar to spike. They cause your insulin to spike. They gum up every cell and organ in your body through a process called glycation. Stop that immediately. Within a few days, you'll feel better. You'll feel better. You'll feel like going for a walk, and you should do that. Okay, you'll feel like being more active. You'll feel like maybe taking the stairs a flight or two instead of the elevator just to go up one floor. Do that. And then you're starting to live what we call a proper human life because you, the first step for all you guys, I don't care how sick you are, how tired, how inflamed, how miserable, how depressed, you must eat a proper human diet. That is the first step. You must remove all the inflammatory, high carb, sugar spiking, slow poison. You got to get that out of your diet. And fill your diet with fatty red meat and eggs with the yolk. You can add some low-carb veg if you want to. You can add some low-carb nuts, some low-carb berries, but you don't have to. That's how you go from, from feeling like you're washed up at 50 to feeling like you're... That's right. You can. You absolutely can. Okay? Good question. Thank you for that. Matt, doctor prescribed me prednisone. My liver pain went away and it was a, uh, an amazing five days. Wondering if this tells you anything that may help with diet. Yeah, your diet is causing inflammation. The prednisone is a steroidal anti-inflammatory. It temporarily beats down the inflammation. Now, taking prednisone for more than three to seven days can have lots of devastating side effects. So probably no damage was done for by, by you taking it for five days. But what it did give you was information. It gave you some relief, of course. But it gave you the information that my liver was inflamed. My Something was inflamed in my stomach. The prednisone calmed down the inflammation temporarily. It didn't fix anything. It just calmed it down. The way you fix it permanently is to get the stuff out of your diet that's causing the inflammation. It could be alcohol. Absolutely. could be fruit juices, which are almost as inflammatory and damaging to the liver as literally as whiskey. Drinking orange juice every day is just as bad for your liver. 99% as bad as drinking whiskey every day. Yeah. Fruit smoothies are very inflammatory. They're full of sucrose and fructose and glucose and lots of phytochemicals that your liver has to then deal with and break tag them for, for or break them down. That's what your liver has to do with all that stuff. Stop that. Drink water, drink unsweetened tea, drink black coffee, 
and eat a proper human diet. Down in the show notes of this video is a link to a video about all the principles of a proper human diet. I go into much more detail. Okay, if you're watching this on Facebook or Twitter, go to my YouTube channel. There's a there's a video that explains it in simple detail. Rachel from old Australia, weak lower body advice to get strong enough to be able to start sprinting, struggle with stairs at the moment. So that's a great question. So again, if you're over the age of 50, 60, 70, 80, and you're like, I can barely get up a flight of stairs. Well, that's, that's good news because that tells me you've got a flight of stairs that you've got access to, whether it's the basement stairs or the attic stairs or the apartment stairs. That is a, that is a free built-in home gym. So if currently you're struggling with the stairs and you might, how many times a day do you take them, Rachel? Let's pretend you take them twice. You have to go down to the basement, do the laundry, come back up then go down again and get the laundry and come back up. So you go, you do the stairs twice a day. Tomorrow, I want you to do the stairs three times, even if you don't need to. One of the trips can be for nothing. That's totally fine. Because when you do that, in addition to eating a proper human diet, you're going to strengthen the muscles in your in your calves, in your thighs, in your butt, in your abdomen. Okay, if you're using your arms and your arms as well. And then after two or three days of going up and down three times, you're going to start going up and down four times, even if two of those trips are completely unnecessary. This is called training and you can train regardless of your current state of fitness. Um, there's people watching right now that the, the most exercise they get a day is getting up out of their chair, going to the bathroom and coming back. Is, is that you? If that's you, then when you go to the restroom, you're going to sit down on the toilet, do your business. Then you're going to stand up and you're going to sit down again and then stand up again. And you're going to do that two, three, four, five, six times until you're like, well, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting unsteady or I'm getting out of breath Then sit there, catch your breath and then go back to your chair. And tomorrow, I want you to go to the bathroom, back to your chair two or three times for no reason, even when you don't have to use the restroom. That's called training. You can start right where you're at and you can start to strengthen all the muscles in your legs and in your core and in your lower back. You can strengthen all those muscles. I don't care if you're 107 years old. It's not too late. If you're watching this video right now, then by definition, it's not too late for you to start to strengthen those muscles. Okay, now you got to feed those muscles. Fatty red meat, eggs with the yolk. If you like liver, eat liver once or twice a week. If you don't like liver, then shut up and grow up and, and figure out a way to eat the liver and eat it once or twice a week. It's good for you. Okay. Thank you, Pabeter. 208 Deal Daddy, could you possibly do a video about the carnivore diet and strength training while still trying to lose weight? I didn't see a video that covered that. And you, I don't have a video that covers that, but my friend, Zane Griggs, who helped me write this book, he's got many videos. He's 52 years of age. And it's perfectly possible and perfectly natural to be burning fat and building muscle at the same time. Now, if, if any of you guys have read Muscle and Fitness magazine or you know the name Joe Weider, you know who that is, then you probably falsely believe that you've got to bulk up, right? And then cut and then cut to get to the muscle. You can't you can't burn fat and build muscle at the same time. That doesn't work that way. You have to bulk up with lots of carbs and then you cut down by starving yourself. And there's the muscle that reveals itself. That's not necessary. You can burn the fat and you can build muscle at the same time. The way you do this is by eating a diet rich in fatty red meat and eggs with yolk and very, very low in carbohydrates. And you work out. That's literally all it takes to build muscle and burn fat at the same time. Thousands of people are doing it. You can do it too, Deal Daddy. Thank you, Brenda. Alan, I have lost 70 pounds on carnivore in just over four months. Now, uh, you hear this all the time on Weight Watchers commercials, Jenny Craig, what is the new thing, Noom, all these, they're like, oh, I lost 70 pounds in four months. But Alan did it. He wasn't starving himself. He wasn't eating small portions. He was eating until he was full. One meal, two meals, three meals a day. He, when he got hungry, he sat down and he ate until he was full. He did not have to push away early. That's the beautiful thing about a carnivore diet. The protein in the fat in the meat and in the eggs, they, they tweak your satiety hormones. So when you've eaten enough nutrition, 
your body just normal, normal, just turns off your hunger. It's like we're built to do that or something weird. It's like every other animal is built to do that, but people think humans aren't. That we're just gluttons and we're going to overeat by God regardless. No, if you eat a proper human diet, you get to do what Alan's doing, lose 70 pounds in four months, but you're eating full portions. Now, it sounds like I'm trying to sell you my carnivore diet deal a meal plan for $49.99, but I'm not. I don't care where you buy your meat. You don't have to buy it from me. I don't sell a, a, a meat box. I'm just telling you, you can you can do what Alan did. Have 90 pounds left to go till I hit my target weight. Stall for two weeks now, even though in ketosis with low glucose, any tips to start losing again. There's no tips, Alan. Nothing's wrong. Okay. This is a normal weight loss pause. This happens to anybody and everybody who is losing weight naturally. In the wild, 100,000 years ago, it was always bad if you were losing weight. It was 100% a bad thing. Something bad had happened. You were trapped in a cave. You broke your leg. You fell off a cliff. If you're losing weight, something is wrong. And your body tries to put the brakes on that. It's like, whoa, what's going on? Why are we losing weight? Okay. Your body doesn't necessarily know that you're a 160 pounds overweight. Now, you were. Your body doesn't know that. It just knows you're losing weight really fast. And so it puts the brakes on for a week or two or three or four. Keep doing exactly what you're doing, Alan, when your body is reassured that there's not a famine, you haven't fallen in a, in a down a well, and you're trapped, the weight loss will start again. And the way you reassure your body that there's not a famine is by eating lots of fatty red meat. During a famine, you don't have meat and eggs. Okay, you're eating grass and shoe leather and bark off a tree. Those are signs to your body that there might be a famine. And so it's going to be like, mm, I don't know. We better slow down this weight loss. But when you're eating fatty red meat and eggs with the yolk, that by definition tells your body there's not a famine. There's food everywhere. Look at all this, this glorious food. And so it won't be many more days, Alan, before the fat loss will begin again. Have patience and keep doing exactly what you're doing. You're not doing anything wrong. Tim, my sister is having trouble with vertigo. Any recommendations? She has... A, uh, she is a lymphoma survivor and is on uh, a uh, medication for hormone for hormone replacement. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, she is not losing weight either after two weeks. Suggestions would be great. So, is she eating low carbohydrate enough? A lot of people start keto and they go to the grocery and they buy all the keto bread, keto shakes, keto cookies, cakes, pies, keto candy. Is there keto toilet paper now? I wouldn't be surprised. And you wipe your butt with it in. It makes you, you're in ketosis then. All that's foolishness, okay? Keto is meat and veg. So is she eating low carb enough? Now, the hormone definitely is going to slow down her fat ability to burn fat, but it's not going to stop it. She may need to be on that hormone replacement. I don't know her, her medical case, right? She needs to talk to her doctor about that. The vertigo could be from any of a hundred different causes. She needs to see her doctor about that. But absolutely, if she eats low carb enough, strict enough for long enough, she's going to burn fat and lose fat. That's just going to happen. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, DC. Thank you, to Toby. Toby, Toby. Unlisted YouTube video. Who initially advocated for 80% of calories from fat as a suitable diet? And what's the rationale? Eating two pounds of beef daily necessitates nearly three pounds of fat, a level I find hard to manage without immediate digestive issues. And it, this can happen to some people. If, you're, if your gastrointestinal system is not used to eating real proper human food, it can take your gut a few days to adjust to it. And so what some people do is they have to go low carb for a couple of weeks and then keto for a couple of weeks, then ketovore for a couple of weeks, and then down to carnivore. If they go straight to carnivore, they'll have gut issues. Now, it's not dangerous to go straight to carnivore. But it can cause some temporary gut issues. Uh, some people just don't, don't want that. And that's fine. You don't have to transition overnight. You can go very slowly. Okay. 80% uh, of calories from fat. I don't I don't talk about calories. I want you to eat a one-to-one -one fat to protein ratio, maybe a two-to-one fat to protein ratio, depending. Uh, and then very, very, very low carbohydrate. If you'll transition to that slowly, you won't have any gut problems at all. Your gut microbiome will adjust and will upregulate the bacteria that love fat.
fat and protein and it'll downregulate the, the bacteria that love carbohydrates and everything will be great with your gut. Okay. You'll also notice that you produce much less gas. Uh, this is a very common non-scale victory for people on a carnivore diet is they just don't fart nearly as often, nearly as much. And when they do pass a little gas, uh, the person sitting next to them doesn't have to reach for the, <coughs> what's that bag behind the airplane seat? The barf bag. Yeah. Cause it doesn't smell nearly as bad. Once you get used to a carnivore diet, it's kind of amazing. Marion. This might be a dumb question, but can I eat grain fed beef if I'm gluten and corn intolerant uh, or should I stick to grass fed beef? Thank you. So that's a great question. And here's the thing that uh, this is a, a bedrock principle of animal biology. OK, cows need to eat grass, grass fed, grass finished, pastured cows that have a beautiful, wonderful life. And then they have one bad minute that last day. That's how every animal should live their life and should give their life. All animals are going to die. There's nothing we can do about that, okay? But as stewards, I'm a, I'm a rancher. I've got about 80 sheep in the pasture right now. Those sheep are out grazing grass right now. The, those sheep have not eaten one grain of corn or any kind of uh, synthetic sheep food from the co-op or from some feed store. They eat grass and weeds. That's what they eat. Okay, they're out there literally either eating grass or taking a nap right now. Got a guardian dog protecting them. Everybody's happy. And that's going to be that. That's going to be their life every day until that, that one day when they have a bad minute. And then they'll be in my freezer. They're going to have a wonderful life. Now, if but here's the thing about ruminant animals. Sheep, goats, venison, cows. You can feed them the crappiest diet. Put them in a feedlot, lock them up, make them stand in their own shit, feed them uh, expired candy and, and ground up movie popcorn that didn't get sold. That's literally what goes into some of the cow feed. It's terrible. But a ruminant animal and the bacteria in their gut, you can also shoot that cow full of steroids, full of hormones, full of antibiotics. None of that stuff makes it to the meat, that ruminant stomach. Everything they eat is processed multiple times through their forced chamber stomach and all the trillions of bacteria in there. They basically detoxify all that stuff and turn it into healthy animal fat and animal protein. So if you can't afford grass-fed, grass-finished, panda-massaged beef that, that grazed only on the slopes of the Himalayas for $42 a pound, can't afford that, that's totally fine. You can buy the cheapest five pound stick of ground beef at your at your local supermarket, your local save a lot, your local discount grocery. That beef is going to be 1000 times more nutritious, less inflammatory and more good for you than the, the most expensive organic non GMO uh, potato chips in the store. Okay. Meat is always more nutritious than plants. There is no exception to that rule. Now, yes, grass-fed, grass finish is going to have a better omega-3 to omega-6 profile a little bit, not a lot of bit. It's going to have more vitamins and minerals in it, no doubt about that. It's probably going to have a better amino acid profile, no doubt about that. But it's going to be 3 to 10% better, not twice as good or 500% better. It's, it's 3 to 10% better. Eat the best meat you can afford, Mary B. Okay, you're not, there's no gluten or, or, or zen from the corn. There's none of that in the muscle or the fat of the cow. All that's in the muscle and the fat of the cow is nutrition. Westfield, just to emphasize, diet is behind illness or keeping you healthy. My dad is 94 years old, has an A1C of 5.2, LDL of less than 100, walks two to four miles a day, never eats fast food. And I can tell he's eating a pretty low carb diet or his A1C wouldn't be 5.2. He's 94. So all you 50 year old, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 60 year olds, and 70 year olds and 80 year olds, shut the hell up. Quit your whining. Quit your moaning. Okay. If you want simple steps on how to get started, there's a link in the show notes. He's 94. He's walking 
three miles a day on average. Shut up. And I get to say that because I used to be severely obese and pre-diabetic, weighed 297 pounds when I was in my 30s. And I, I go back in time and I tell myself, shut up. Shut up your whining. This is all your fault. You're eating crap. You didn't know it was crap. You thought it was good stuff, but it's not. Okay. For the vast majority of you guys watching this, a, a, an organic non-GMO fruit smoothie is just as bad for you as drinking a two liter of Coke. There's nothing magic about grinding up fruit. Fruit is, is has been has been selectively crossbred for about, depending on the fruit, from 200 from 100 years to 6,000 years. Humans have been fiddling with them, finding the sweetest varieties, the biggest varieties, crossbreeding those. And used to a, a wild grape was about the size of my pinky and was bitter as it could be. We still have them here in Tennessee. We call them possum grapes. They grow, grow wild in the woods. And you, you, you see them, you're like, oh, little tiny grapes. And you, uh-uh, mm -mm, the tannins are so high, the sugar content so low, you'd have to be starving to eat them. But that's the original grape. Uh, the, these grapes that are this big around and seedless and taste like a sack of sugar, that's, that's been crossbred for generations to get it to that. There was no such thing as that back in the day, okay? No human more than 12,000 years ago, every human on planet Earth, ate a low carb diet. By definition, there was no choice. And so huzzah to your dad, tell him I said, hi, I love it. You should, uh, he, should, he needs a YouTube channel. Maybe Westfield, you could be in charge of, you could be the videographer and just, just video him eating his meals, video him going for his walks, ask him questions. He's 94. Can you imagine the wisdom that Westfield's dad has? Every day you should ask him a question. Dad, what do you think about politics these days what do you think about religion what do you think about what's what 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 are the three things that define a good man dad what wouldn't you all wouldn't you all love to see a video of somebody who's been on this earth 94 years as a man and a father wouldn't you love to pick his brain what's the what what's your morning routine what do you do how what do you do every night what do you never do what what are three things you recommend a man never do in his whole life I'd love to hear the answers. The Westfield's dad, who's 94, I'd love, I'd love to hear those answers. That'd be awesome, I think. Just a thought. Low-carb introvert. ALT is tw was 21 in 2022. 20, uh, this year, 47. Should I be concerned? Yes, you, you should. Uh, I, I take it from your handle you're eating low-carb, but I'm afraid you may not be eating low-carb enough, or you may be drinking too much alcohol, thinking that it's in some way good for your health. It's not. All alcohol is poison without exception. Uh, the dose makes the poison. So if you have if you have one glass of wine a month, probably not a big deal. But if you have a, a glass or two every night because it's supposed to be good for your heart, that's poison. Yeah, you're doing permanent damage to your liver and other organs. Stop that. Okay. If lowering the carbs and eliminating the alcohol, if that doesn't get your ALT back to normal, you need to have your doctor investigate that thoroughly. Thank you very much, Tina. Thank you, Janet, from another planet. Sherrick Cervantes, husband, is an uncontrolled insulin-dependent type 2 diabetic with an A1C of 10.6. Any of you guys, when you say I'm a type 2 diabetic, I want you to add a word to that sentence from this day forward. I want you to say I'm a type 2 diabetic currently. Because in every single case of type 2 diabetes on this planet, it can be completely and totally reversed. That goes for your husband too, Sherry. Was taking 70-30 insulin. Doc changed to 20 units of long acting once daily and 10 units of mealtime uh, quick release. Doc said to stop taking metformin. Would you suggest that? Uh, so basically changing his insulin up and changing his prescription medications, that's like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic as it sinks. That's, that's what your doctor's doing. Your husband immediately needs to start watching my video playlist on my YouTube channel called Keto 101. And he needs to start changing his diet immediately. With an A1C of 10.6, he's doing disastrous amounts of damage to every organ in his body, from his eyes to his heart to his liver to his penis. And before long, shit's going to stop working and it's going to be permanent. 
Okay, he's going to lose a toe. He's going to go blind. He's going to have to be on dialysis. Terrible things are coming. And you, Sherry, are going to get to be his caregiver, basically. And so I know you love him or you wouldn't be you wouldn't have spent 20 bucks asking this question. Love him, respect him, care for him. But you need to be gently, lovingly persistent that he cut the carbs out of his diet immediately. If you're fond of him and you would like to keep him around in his current condition. Now, if you if you secretly hate him and would like to bump him off, just feed him more carbs every day and it won't be many months. He'll be gone or he'll be in the nursing home, which in many cases is worse than death. But if you love him and care about him, he needs to start my Keto 101 playlist today on my YouTube channel. And he needs to watch as many of those as he needs to watch until he's like, oh, OK, I get it. I get it. I get it now. I think I understand what to do. And what's going to happen is he's quick. He'll 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 have to stop the ten units of mealtime insulin. He'll have to stop that in a day or two, or he'll start to get low blood sugars. And then he'll be weaning that twenty units of of long acting that he takes at bedtime. He'll have to start weaning that down to eighteen, sixteen, fourteen, twelve. He'll and then he'll eventually he'll stop that in three months after three months of the keto diet. Or if he wants to go carnivore, that's great too. But you'll have to stop the insulin even faster. After three months of doing that, and he goes back and gets his A1C recheck, Sherry, it's going to be a it's going to be about 7.5 in three months. Another three months, it's going to be about 6.2. Another three months, it's going to be about 5.6, which is normal. And he'll no longer be a type 2 diabetic, and he, he won't be on any of this medicine. Doesn't that sound like a, a better strategy than you know, rearranging the deck chairs on the sinking Titanic. And now after your hubby has done this and after he's completely reversed his type two diabetes, Sherry, I want you and him, I want you to make it your mission in life. The way you're going to pay me back is you're going to teach your doctor about the power of a low carb diet to reverse type two diabetes. Because when you show your doctor, look, dude, this is what we're doing. He's off that insulin completely. He's not taking that. And his A1C just keeps coming down. He keeps getting healthier. He keeps, he's losing belly fat. Aren't you curious as to how we're doing this? Don't you want to know what you like to use this strategy for your other patients who have prediabetes or diabetes? And any good doctor that's worth a damn, any doctor that's worth their salt, um, immediately is going to say, yeah, what are you doing? This is intriguing. I want to have, I want to read about this. What is this you're doing? Because when you teach that doctor and change that doctor's mind and that doctor starts recommending low carb, you're not just going to help save one person's life. You're going to help save the life of every single patient that that doctor comes into contact with for the rest of his career. That's pretty powerful. And I don't know what you do for a living, Sherry. I don't know what your husband do, does for a living. And I also don't care. It doesn't matter. Because anybody can learn to eat a proper human diet. And then that same anybody can teach somebody else how to eat a proper human diet. It used to be grandmothers and mothers who taught us to eat a proper human diet. But the grandmothers and mothers uh, were tricked by the big food manufacturers. And now they think that baking a cake with extra icing, that's how you show your family love. They, they mean well, they love their family, but they don't know better. They've been tricked. We've got to take back our heritage and say, no, our family tradition is not that we're going to bake you a cake with extra icing. No, that's that's unhealthy. That's bad for us. Our new family tradition is for your birthday, you're going to get a prime cut ribeye with the fat still on it. Not We're not going to fit, trim the fat and I'm going to I'm going to grill your steak for you. Happy birthday because you're going to live a long damn time when you get that A1C down to 5.6 or lower. Uh, please consider, Sherry, becoming part of our private group. There's hundreds of people in there already who completely reversed their type 2 diabetes that are happy to say, hey, I live right up the road from you. I'll, I'll come to your house. I'll, I'll go through your pantry, your cabinets. I'll tell you. I'll show you what to throw away, and I'll tell you what to replace it with. We'll go through your fridge. I'll tell you what to give to charity, give to the neighbor, give to your dog, and I'll tell you what to fill your refrigerator up with so that you can reverse this type 2 diabetes and keep it reversed for the rest of your life, for the rest of your long, healthy, active life. Wouldn't that be awesome, Sherry? That's completely possible. I didn't, I didn't blow any smoke just then. I'm telling you like it is. Thank you, DC. 
Eve again, 53-year-old, 6 foot, 108 kilograms, uh, glucose 84, A1C 5.5, that's good. Insulin 9, that's not bad at all. HOMA uh, IR 1.87, C-peptide 1.55. Trig still too high at 200. We want to get those down under 150. HDL 45, which is not terrible. Would like to get that a little higher. LDL 262, EGFR 58. If EGFR too much sugar, why glucose labs okay? So the glucose labs can be okay. This is a great question. Uh, labs can get very confusing very quickly if you're not trained. So your A1C is 5.5. It's good. Glucose 84. But you got these labs checked while you were fasting. You can be a severe type 2 diabetic and have a normal fasting glucose. Happens every day. That, and if that why that's why if your doctor is not checking an A1C, you can have pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes and your doctor not know it for 10 years because you can have a normal blood sugar if you fast overnight. The A1C tells me you're not you're eating pretty low carb. You're doing pretty darn good, but your insulin is nine. And I'd really like that to be closer to five. That tells me that you're still eating too many carbohydrates for your personal physiology. And as you decrease the carbs down and get that insulin down to about five or six, you're going to notice that your EGFR, each time you get it checked, it's going to keep improving. Okay. Now, if any of you guys, I talked about A1C, fasting insulin, C peptide. If you're like, I don't know what any of that means, then you need this book. I wrote it with my good friend, Kim Howerton. It's called Common Sense Labs. And it talks about every single one of these labs that, that he shared with us. It tells you which labs to ask your doctor for. It tells you why you want those labs. Because how many times have you guys asked your doctor for a lab and, he, and they're like, I don't even know what that is. I wouldn't even know how to interpret it. This tells you how to teach your doctor how to interpret it and why you want it. It's also got the ICD-10 codes in there. So if your doctor says, oh, your insurance won't even pay for that. So yeah, if you use these codes right here, it will pay for it. Including Medicare and Medicaid. Common Sense Labs. There's a link in the show notes. Good question. Toby, 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 Toby. I had a question I couldn't really find anywhere. Does carnivore help with UTIs? Oh, 100%. I'm mostly carnivore, and I'd like to know what your opinion is on how I should treat a UTI or any, uh, or any preventatives. Thank you. Thank you. So any, any of you guys that are having recurrent UTIs, which stands for urinary tract infection, or if you're having inflammation, chronic cystitis, any of those kind of problems, or recurrent kidney stones, a proper human diet is going to make all those things much less likely to keep happening. Okay. The average kidney stone is calcium oxalate. You only get oxalates from vegetables. Or if you're eating a highly inflammatory diet filled with sugars and fructose, you actually can make oxalate in your body. Okay. I've got a video on my YouTube channel about kidney stones. I got a video on my YouTube channel about gall, gallbladder. Uh, all these things are addressed. I've been making these videos now for four or five years. There's over 900 videos on this, my YouTube channel. And so if, you, if you're like, well, I wonder what I can do about fatty liver or prediabetes. I wonder what I can do about my blood pressure. Go to, my, go to YouTube and type Dr. Barry blood pressure, Dr. Barry fatty liver, Dr. Barry fatty pancreas. You ever heard of that? Yeah, that's the thing. Dr. Barry sleep apnea. Um, just type my name and then whatever medical condition or even whatever medicine you got a question about. Dr. Barry insulin, Dr. Barry HCTZ, Dr. Barry beta blocker. And you will find videos that I've made that will help you understand what's going on and how you can start to take easy steps to make your health better, thereby making your life better. Thank you, Amy, very much. UK carnivore, my mom has started ketivore this week and sub to your wife. So my wife, Nisha, had uncontrolled Hashimoto, severe symptoms, felt like death on a cracker. And I kept telling her, I think you should try this keto thing. I, I think you should try this carnivore thing. And she thought I was dumb. And for months, she's like, OK, whatever, shut up. And then finally, without telling me, because she's that kind of wife, she just started eating carnivore. Didn't tell nobody, just did it. And within days, her Hashimoto symptoms were already better. Within months, 
she no longer needed the medication for her Hashimoto's. And I'm not saying that's going to happen to everybody, but I am saying that for everybody with Hashimoto's, your symptoms are going to get better <laughs> on, a, on a keto, keto or carnivore diet. <clears throat> She's got a YouTube channel. And on that channel, my son Beckett, who's three, almost four, my daughter you met earlier, Bonnie Blue, and my wife, Nisha, we all eat a proper human diet in this house. And she vlogs and she shows when she's cooking. And you're like, I wonder how they eat. Subscribe to Nisha's channels. Her channel is just type in N-E-I-S-H-A in YouTube. She's the number one Nisha on YouTube. And you can subscribe to her channel. And every time she has a new video, you can be like, I wonder what they feed their four-year-old boy. I wonder what they feed their one-year-old girl. I wonder what Nisha eats. Because she's pretty good looking. I wonder what she, wonder, I wonder how Dr. Barry eats. Does he eat three meals a day with snacks in between? I wonder. It's all on Nisha's channel. You should maybe subscribe. I don't know. It's just a thought. Angelic Annihilator, 25-year-old male, been carnivore for a while, eating a lot, but can't gain weight. I'm a bit underweight. Should I eat the 50-gram limit of carbs per day? So if you're young and you have a very fast metabolic rate, then it's very hard to gain weight. I, I used to be, when I was in my early 20s, I was six foot three and a half, what I still am, and I weighed about 190 pounds, and I was bony, bony. No fat. I had an eight pack. Yeah, it, there's eight in there, not just six. But uh, you can only see six of mine now. Used to, you see eight. But I couldn't gain weight. I worked out all the time. I memorized uh, Joe Weider's bodybuilding Bible, did all the things. Couldn't gain any weight whatsoever. Uh, I would recommend that he bump his carbs up to, to 30, 40 grams a day. And keep and he's got to lift heavy and he cannot overtrain if he does. And so if he he's like, what's overtraining? What does that mean? He needs to look that up because that's that's a, I overtrained bad when I was in my twenties. I didn't know better. I bet he's overtraining. Okay, but he's got to keep eating his fatty red meat and his eggs with the yolk. That's mandatory to build the muscle. But if he if he wants to just gain some weight, he can add a few few grams of carbs back in his diet and he'll gain some weight. Stephen Chicklets, I am 51. I think this is a, a answer to a previous question. Uh, seven months ago, I went carnivore. I am down 80 pounds, 80 pounds in seven months. Feel amazing, thanks to Dr. Barry and his wife, Nisha's advice. You ain't dead if you're over 50. You've got the wisdom and the knowledge. Now you've just got to get your health back, and you're going to be, you're going to be a dangerous force to be reckoned with. Huzzah. I love it. John Groft, thanks so much. Down 135 pounds over the last few years. A1C went from 6.4 down to 5.6 within the first six months, all thanks to your advice. Very low carb, probably ketoboard, combined with intermittent fasting. It changed my life. Now, a lot of people think that there must be magic in the meat or eggs. I keep talking about it. And, and there must, there must, it's in, in, in the, the intermittent fasting, there must be magic. No, that's just the default setting. That's how all humans used to eat was very low carb. And very often they'd go a day or two without eating. It was just part of life. Now we feel like we have to eat three meals a day full of high carb, inflammatory, slow poison. And then we have to have snacks in between. Uh, also of high carb, high sugar, highly processed, inflammatory, slow poison. There's nothing magic in the meat or the eggs. There's nothing magic in the fasting. What you're doing is removing the slow poison. To the degree to which you get the slow poisons out of your diet, that's the degree to which your health will improve. Okay? Huzzah, John. Now John's going to be teaching his friends and family how to do this because they're all interested because John looks way the hell better than he used to look. And not just physically either. I mean mentally as well. Guarantee you he's happier. Tia. Hey, Dr. Barry, my husband's blood sugar is normal, 3.8 to 4.4. That's in UK measurements. But his ketone levels have been consistently low for over a month, no higher than 0.4. Do you know what might be happening? He's probably now keto adapted. And he's he's if he's still eating very low carb, then he's making ketones. But he's also utilizing those ketones. So if his ketone level is 0.4, that's fine. Okay, he's doing great. Is he gaining weight? No. Is his blood sugar going up? No. 
Is he healthier, getting healthier slowly but surely? Yes. He's doing nothing wrong. That's fine, Tia. He's doing great. Thank you, John. Thank you, Arogia. Peachy Pan MD. Peachy Pamin MD. Dr. Barry, hello. I have congestive heart failure, diabetes, and an ejection fraction of 27%. Is it okay for me to do the carnivore diet 100%? Yes. Carnivore diet and salt your meat to taste. Okay. If you don't eat enough salt, your congestive heart failure will get worse. You can absolutely, you can completely reverse your type two diabetes, Peachy, by eating a carnivore diet. Your ejection fraction, because once you're eating either, uh, if you want to do keto, that's fine. But if you want to do carnivore, that's what you mentioned. Huzzah. Hell yes. Do it. As you get into ketosis, your heart muscles, your myocytes, they're going to start burning ketones and fatty acids for fuel. And your ejection fraction is going to improve. I'm sure the heart doctor said this is permanent. This is just where you're going to be. Mm -mm, no. Give it six months of carnivore and then go back and get, and get another echo and have them measure your ejection fraction again. And when the cardiologist is looking at their port and going, I don't understand. It says your ejection fraction's 35% now. That's weird. You can be like, well, I've been eating a carnivore diet. And, and some crazy YouTube doctor told me it would actually improve my ejection fraction. And I believed him because he wasn't trying to sell me anything. He was just talking for free. And maybe you can teach your cardiologist something. Westfield says carnivore communities are the best, supportive, motivational, and non judgmental, unlike my previous experience with vegans who judged everyone. Now, that's Westfield's opinion. And I'm sure in many cases he's right about that. I, um, I, I, I love it when vegans come to my channel, I love it when they ask me questions in the comments. I think going vegan is the first step towards adopting a proper human diet. Because if you go vegan, you're at least thinking about the food you eat. The average person don't think about it. They just grab some honey buns and shove them, Doritos, Pepsi. They don't think. They're like, whatever, it doesn't matter. The American Diabetes Association said, as long as my A1C is seven, I'm fine. Hope you don't believe that. This is not true. Uh, but I love it when vegans come to this channel. We've got we've got in our private community, we've got at least 50 former vegans who are like, yeah, I felt better for a few weeks or a few months when I started the vegan diet. But then after that, I kept getting progressively worse. Skin conditions, gut conditions, joint, teeth getting loose, skin. I look, I look 10 years older than my chronological age. And when I added meat back into my diet, I felt much better. And then I just kept adding more meat and subtracting more veg. And now... I'm a member of Dr. Barry's private community and I feel better at my current age than I did 10 years ago. So if any of you guys are like, well, I, I would like to try carnivore, but I feel like the carnivores are all aggressive and mean. Become a member of our private group and just, just put in the main chat. Hey, I'm, I'm currently a vegan. I'm trying to figure out this, this keto, ketovore, carnivore thing. Would one of you guys who used to be a vegan, will you reach out and help me? Bet you. There's 10, 20, 30 people reaching out to you saying, hey, I got you. I did the same exact thing. I was scared to death. I was afraid I was going to have a heart attack for the first month. Now I feel better than I did 10 years ago. Okay. That, that same scenario holds if you're currently type 2 diabetic, if you currently have fatty liver, hypertension, dementia, arthritis, any pretty much any chronic medical condition that you can name, we've got either dozens or hundreds of people in that private community just waiting for you to join and post in the main chat. Hey, I'm new here. I've got my blood pressure's crazy. Have any of you guys improved your blood pressure with a proper human diet? Watch, watch your new friends come out of the woodwork and take you by the hand and say, yes, yes, my friend. Let me, let me show you how I did it. There's a link down in the show notes if you want to join. John, is carnivore safe for diverticulitis? So diverticulitis is a flare-up of diverticulosis. So the condition is diverticulosis. And absolutely carnivores, not only is it safe for diverticulosis, but if any of you guys have diverticulosis and you'd like to never have another diverticulitis flare up for the rest of your life, I would highly recommend that you go carnivore. That's that's how you're going to 
drastically cut the, the odds that you ever have another bout of diverticulitis. Thank you, the Tony, Tony Sean. Here's Tuna Boy. My daughter is having PCOS, menstrual issues, anxiety, and depression. Her doctor said it's normal. <sighs> Let me just take this opportunity to apologize for all doctors who still practice like I used to practice. Please accept my apology. Do not let that frustrate you and, and make you give up on improving your health. Doctors say stupid shit all the time. And it's not because they're evil. They just don't know better. They're lazy. They're overworked. They're burnt out. They're underpaid. Yeah, they're underpaid. Trust me. For the work they do, the, the training that they've been through, the hours they put in. Yeah. Uh, your doctor just doesn't know better. Um, it's not normal to have PCOS. It's not normal to have menstrual issues. It's not normal to have anxiety and depression. If you'll get your doctor, I've got at least one, if not two PCOS videos on this channel to uh, my YouTube channel, Tuna Boy, have your daughter watch them. And in those videos, she will get the basic concepts of how to, how to effectively put her PCOS in re remission, uh, fix her menstrual issues and make her anxiety and her depression noticeably better. And she doesn't have to sign up for anything, buy anything, no supplements required. She just has to change her diet. And then if she's of a mind, when she feels much better, she can go back and she can have a conversation with that doctor and say, you know, that advice you gave me was really bad. It's actually dangerous because I could have given up. I could have said, well, if that's if this is normal, then I don't want to live anymore. I could have done something to myself because of your advice. And I think if more people have that kind of conversation with their doctor, you don't have to go in and yell at them. You don't have to throw shit. You don't have to break anything. Don't get the cops called. Just say, I'd like to, I'd really like to discuss something with you for five minutes. And I, I'm, I'm afraid you're not aware of this. You're my doctor. And when you told me that, that having PCOS and dysmenorrhea and anxiety and depression, you said, that's normal. I, I literally almost gave up on my life. That's you almost caused me to do something that I can never take back. Did you stop to consider that at all? Because I fixed that stuff now. Are you curious at all how I did it? I'd love it if you guys would start. I mean, sometimes you need to just fire your doctor. I get it. But I'm also a big advocate uh, when, you, when you have corrected your health with a proper human diet and living a proper human life. I want you to go back and talk to that doctor. Say, yeah, I paid $35 copay so I can sit here for five minutes and try to help you understand what you almost caused me to do. That'd be a pretty strong conversation for a doctor to have to sit and listen to, wouldn't it? You're capable of that. Ah, oh, here is uh, how to cure seborrheic dermatitis permanently. So I've got a video about this on my YouTube channel. You got dandruff? I used to have dandruff so bad, I would, I would never wear this color shirt. All my shirts were white or beige, cream color, light colors because if I wore this color shirt and, and did this, it would look like there'd been a snow flurry. And so I was constantly, you know, how you pop your shirt. I, I got very good at popping my shirt before I walked into every patient room to get some of the dandruff off. Uh, since eating a carnivore diet, I literally never have dandruff ever. And I had dandruff the first 35 years of my life from, from childhood on. And it was, there's nothing magic in the meat. It's just that I stopped all the grains. I stopped all of the liquid dairy, drinking the milk, drinking the skim milk, eating the, the fat-free yogurt. I stopped all that stuff. I stopped the vegetable seed oils, and I stopped all the sugar. Now, do I know exactly which one of the things I stopped that made the dandruff go away? I suspect it was the, the, the wheat and the, and the milk, but I don't know for sure. And furthermore, I don't really care. I'm, I'm just happy I don't have dandruff anymore and I'm able to eat a delicious, sustainable diet that doesn't cause nearly as many animals to lose their life as a vegan diet does. And if you're like, wait a minute, I thought you ate animals. Yeah, I do. Okay. It takes about, it takes about two cows and two pigs a year to feed me. So four animals died. Now, when the farmer clears 50 acres of land 
and then sprays glyphosate all over it, breaks up the ground, discs up the ground. Do you understand? Do you can you even guesstimate how many cute, cuddly little furry creatures die immediately because they got caught in the plow or they got poisoned by the glyphosate? How many little infant, little mammals died in the nest because mama got killed? Nobody to feed them. How many millions of insects died? How many trillions of bacteria and fungus died? So you can have your soybeans or your corn or your wheat. So don't talk to me about killing animals. If you think a plant-based diet kills fewer animals than a carnivore diet, you're either self-delusional or you just haven't thought about it and did the math. Okay. My sheep in the pasture right now, they're actually, they're actually stimulating growth. Every time I clear out some trees, I make a brush pile, more room for quail to come back, for pheasant to come back, more room for groundhogs, rabbits, ground squirrels, and then all of the little mammals, all the little field mice, they're coming back. Every night when I walk outside now, there, there are little toad frogs everywhere. When we first moved here, there were soybean fields all around us. There were no toad frogs, no crickets, none of that stuff. It was just at night, it was silent. Now there's actual creatures in the night again. There's little furry, cuddly little creatures all out in the pasture right now. I'm actually stimulating life by, by, by ranching my animals and eating them. I'm actually stimulating millions and millions of lives that otherwise wouldn't be here on this earth. Just a thought. J and S, husband and I spread the word. I tell them Dr. Barry is my gospel. Now, thank you, but now it's a little too far. Thank you both for changing our lives. God bless. Thank you very much, J and S. And so they they spread the word. And when when somebody who hasn't seen J and S in a year, they see them, they're like, "Holy crap, you look amazing! I graduated high school with you. You're as old as me. Why, how do you look so amazing?" J and S are happy to tell them, "We eat a proper human diet and we live a proper human life." You should join Dr. Barry's community. Mm. I am a lucky man. Yeah. No, I got more to say. All right, guys, that's my cue. I've got to go. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks so much for the super chats and super stickers. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. If you'd like to get your questions answered, I will be... Uh, probably doing a pop in live in our private community tomorrow morning. And so there's a link down in the show notes. Join our community tomorrow after church. Yeah, after church, I'll do a pop in live in the private group. So you can join now and you ha have your notifications turned on and you can be instead of 2,800 people asking questions like we got right here, there'll be 200, 300 asking questions. And every single person in there will be motivated. There won't be any trolls. There won't be any vegans yelling and saying you're, you're a murderer. It'll just be people 100% motivated and interested in attaining the best health that's possible for them at this current age, whatever age they happen to be. Uh, feel free to share this video if you have not. Hit that thumbs up if you have not. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you very much. If you've improved your health in any small way from listening to my advice, thank you for paying it forward. Recommend one of my books to somebody, maybe buy a book for Christmas or birthday, join our private community, or best yet, teach your friends and family the power of a proper human diet. Thank you very much, guys. I'm out of here. I'll see you next time.